Welcome to the Smart Edit 5 addendum video. We're happy today to show you the new features available in the latest operating system for your Casablanca digital video editor, Smart Edit 5. My name is Chet Davis, Vice President of Marketing and Sales with Macrosystem US, and I'm delighted to have this opportunity to share these great new features with you. Smart Edit 5 will function on any of the editors in the Casablanca 2 family, that is the Claro, the Avio, Cron, Cron Plus, Prestige, Solitaire, Solitaire Plus, and our newest models, the Renome, Renome Plus, and the Gymnos. You may have heard already that one of the great features of Smart Edit 5 is that it allows you, the producer, to work with the higher resolution images available through HDV footage. These are special camcorders sold in the marketplace today, primarily manufactured by Sony, Canon and JVC that provide us these higher resolution images on the same size DV cassettes. But I'm going to save the portion focusing on HDV for the uh, last part of our tutorial today, focusing as we work through each menu screen by screen. We're going to start in the system settings screen. And as I click through here, you can see a couple of changes if you're familiar with Smart Edit uh, 4, or even maybe you're coming to 5 from Smart Edit 3. By the way, if you are brand new to Casablanca, I would highly encourage and remind you to check out the full tutorial where we work a whole project from start to finish. Uh, that's the Smart Edit 3 tutorial video. We also have an addendum for Smart Edit 4. If you don't have those, feel free to call our offices in Boulder and we'll make sure that we provide that to you. Let's start again in the system settings screen and one of the changes you'll notice is some new options with the availability to monitor your signal. Now I want to point out right here, this has nothing to do how the end product is going to be received by your audience. This is entirely focused on how you will monitor, how you will watch and critically evaluate your work as you're building your project. The options are, that we've always had, the same here in terms of you can watch on a single video monitor by taking the audio and video out to a TV monitor or a video monitor, you can watch on a single monitor. So you'll see both the menu or interface, and when you go to playback any video clip or to preview an effect, you'll see that displayed on your video monitor. Okay? We also have the capability of going to a dual screen capability. You can see right now I've got the single monitor set up, but if I select one of the VGA settings, it'll let me go to a dual monitor setup. Okay? So I can select just a single VGA monitor or a dual monitor setup. Some people prefer the dual monitor because it gives you some more what folks call screen real estate. I have my menu playing back on the VGA monitor and all my video playing back on my video or TV monitor. It, it really boils down to your own preference, what you're most comfortable working with in your edit suite. Here's a brand new feature though. If I select VGA and go single monitor, I can have both the menu and video playback on a single video monitor. Okay, and here's what that would look like. If I click on OK, the system will shut down, will reboot, and you'll notice you need to click Yes to confirm that you want this new monitor set up. When you do that, you'll see that all of your video and your menus will show up on a single VGA monitor. Now some people prefer that because of the newer advances in the VGA, uh, LCD monitors, uh, plasma monitors. For example, here we're using this very attractive Dell monitor with great resolution and the images just look fabulous. You'll see the developers gave us a couple of options down here in this screen menu and one of them is the frame versus field. You may be aware in the system of television we use, there's actually two separate fields, two parts of one frame that come together. If you're interested in the specifics of that, it's an odd field and an even field that come together to make a single frame. And that's what you're seeing when you click on frame. If you're using some of the flat screen monitors, particularly the, the VGA, the LCD uh, monitors, some of them don't display that interlaced, those fields, very well. You get kind of a comb effect, what some people would call a jitter and kind of a shakiness around some of the motion. To avoid that, the developers gave us the capability to only look at the field instead of the frame. Now, you'll be missing a tiny bit of detail. Most folks probably won't notice that. 
And the important thing to note is this does not affect your end product. This is just affecting how you're monitoring the signal. The other choice here to allow distortion, if I'm working with some video that was recorded in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is different than the traditional 4 by 3 aspect ratio that many of us have been shooting in for years, I have the capability to force the monitor to see that 16 by 9 in a, in a 4 by 3 setting. So it's kind of squeezed in there, but it just lets me use a standard monitor even though I'm looking at footage is 16 by 9. Again, the important thing to recognize is this is not affecting the final output, your final product, what the audience will see. This is only a convenience for you as you're working on building your project. Oh, one more thing I do want to add about uh, if you're using a VGA monitor. You'll notice there are several different settings. We recommend using either VGA1, which is 800 by 600 resolution, or VGA3, which has a 1024 by 768 resolution. Both of those are 60 hertz, which conforms better to the electrical system we're using in this country and gives you a much cleaner display. The one thing you will notice that is different is on VGA1, your video playback, particularly if you're using the single VGA monitor setting, gives you a much larger window. All right, let's go ahead and work out. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that and get back to our regular screen. Um, the other choice that's notable in this one, and, and a number of customers have been asking for this modification as well, some of you have been using smart rendering, which is a great benefit in, in Smart Edit 4 operating system. But some people wanted a choice, and the developers came through on that request. Previously, when you rendered an effect using smart rendering, it would start rendering one effect, and then if you said, well, I want to add something else as well to the plate, well, it stopped working on that first effect and then begun working on the second effect. The developers gave us a choice now you can render the last inserted effect first, so it's done, okay? That's the way it is in Smart Edit 4. Or if you prefer, render the last insert last. That way it'll start working on number one and finish number one. Then it will go to the second item you requested and finish that out, and then the third, and so on and so on. So if you prefer your background rendering to be finished in the order that you're adding it, you want to select this setting here. Render last, insert, last. This button again, just like in Smart Edit 4, turns the background rendering or the smart rendering on and off. You must engage that when you first get your Casablanca for the smart rendering to be effective. There's also this new button down here. We've heard from a number of customers who are showing their finished presentations to large groups, primarily by the use of a, you know, one of the VGA or video projectors. And sometimes using these VGA projectors, you get an area that a, a technician would call the overscan area. It's the area that we traditionally don't see on a TV monitor, but is actually present in the signal. Well, the effects in video editors are made not to go all the way to the edges of the overscan portion of the signal. This cover border gives you a nice thin, tiny black border all the way around the edge of the screen where the effects end. It just makes a nice finished presentation. This is particularly useful, again, if you're showing to large groups with a video projector or if you believe that your finished product will be seen on a computer monitor being played back in somebody's computer. All right, so this concludes the changes in the system settings screen. Let's go now into the project settings screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and select an empty project. Again, we'll cover this at the